Hello to everyone who's just joining this webinar. Uh, I'm just going to wait for a few moments to just make sure that everyone has been able to access the webinar okay before we kick off with our content. So I think we'll just kick off now. So hello and welcome everyone. And um, this is the second information webinar on the ESB Brighter Future Arts Fund in partnership with Business to Arts. And um, we are currently recording this webinar. So if any of you um, need to dip off early or maybe possibly um, come in late, um, we will be able to access the recording on our YouTube channel um, later on this afternoon. And uh, those things will be available on our website as well just some general kind of housekeeping information for the webinar today. Um, so this is a webinar format um, on Zoom. So all of the attendees, you cannot see each other. You can just see myself um, and my colleague, um, Hannah, who's our other presenter. So I am Eileen Hanratty. I am the Senior Manager of Membership and Projects at Business Schwartz, who are working on the fund with ESB. And then my colleague, Hannah Lamont, who is Membership and Project Manager, is also on the webinar. And she'll be speaking to some of the content later on. Um, as we're going through the webinar slides today, um, do feel free to pop in any questions that you might have. We have a Q&A box toward the bottom of your screen. Um, do pop in any questions that kind of spring to mind um, whenever they come in. We will be doing a full dedicated Q&A session at the end of the webinar. So do feel free to pop in the question as it comes to the forefront of your mind. But we will be answering all questions towards the end. So if it is a case that you cannot stay until the end to maybe watch um, the actual session and um, see your question being answered, you can always go back online to watch it on YouTube just to make sure that you've got that, that answer then from ourselves. So just a very brief um, agenda that we're going to go through today. We are going to just give um, an overview um, of the ESB Brighter Future Arts Fund and all the relevant information in terms of dates and guidelines. We're going to just go into some um, general grant writing tips as well. And then we're going to touch a bit more specifically on audience evaluation and budget in terms of those questions that we would like to see answered throughout the... Um, sorry, I'm just realizing I'm not on the right screen. There we go. <laughs> Um, so in terms of our agenda today, um, as I said, we're going to give the overview of the fund, some grant writing tips, um, and then touch really specifically on the audience evaluation and budget section, um, just to really kind of help give that full description as to what your project is going to be, how it's really going to link in with the objectives of the ESB Brighter Future Arts Fund, and how then we'll be able to kind of assess that. And finally, we'll touch on that Q&A session then at the end. Um, many of the questions that we have um, might receive in today there's been a lot of information already that's been um, taken in via email and other kind of general conversations we've had. We do have a frequently asked question document available um, on our website that you can access at any time. It's available on our website, which is just businesstowarts.ie slash artsfund slash ESB. We will be able to put up all those links in our chat function as well. So we're just going to move on now. So then Hannah is just going to kind of touch um, very briefly on the overview of the fund now that we have the screen available. Can see <laughs> I, the did, I didn't want to interrupt you, Eileen, because I felt like you were on a roll. So I was going to say like, no, always jump in. Are... Always jump in. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks everyone for joining. I've just shared the links to our FAQ document as well as our Business to Arts website. And that's the webpage where you can find more information about um, the ESB Brighter Future Arts Fund. So um, my name is Hannah Lamont. I am a manager of membership and projects at Business to Arts. And I'm just going to talk to you through the, the fund itself that we're all here to discuss today. So the ESB Brighter Future Arts Fund, it's an all-island uh, arts fund which aligns with ESB's Brighter Future strategy uh, by promoting environmental sustainability in diverse and ambitious ways. It will support the Irish arts community by funding or commissioning artists or groups of artists or even arts organizations to create new work during a period of unprecedented change that we find ourselves in. Um, so through this open call, ESB is seeking to fund new artworks or arts projects which respond to the question, what does a brighter future look like? Um, we want to see projects that are engaging the public in a vision for Ireland that is hopeful and inspiring. Um, if you want to know a little bit more about the ESB strategy, Bevan Cody, who is one of the uh, ESB teammates on our steering group here, um, she uh, spoke very fluently about ESB's uh, mission and strategy in our webinar on Tuesday and that will also be online on YouTube uh, so we'll send links to that as well in the chat feature shortly. 
Um, so just to give you a bit of an overview of the fund, so the fund is going to distribute up to 140,000 euro uh, to artworks and art projects that are across the island of Ireland, both the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland. Um, it's an open call that's open to all art forms. So and we just want to see that projects are engaging um, with the public. So that could be, you know, uh, visual arts, uh, performing arts, um, uh, spoken word, literary arts, and um, a whole host of artworks. Um, the the aims of, uh, sorry the, the fund aims to support artists or groups of artists that are working with a partner organization so um, a partner organization could be a venue a event event a festival an arts organization a community group or a funding body and um, we just want to see that you're working in partnership with an organization that makes sense for the project and that you're working in a collaborative way um, the fund also aims to support artworks and art projects that respond to the following themes, which are um, what a brighter future looks like. That's the question we're kind of putting at the heart of all this and um, that reflect a low carbon future and um, that reflect best practice in environmental sustainability and that address environmental and sustainable development goals. Um, and also that might enhance the participation of communities and audiences in the environment. Um, one key thing that's a part of this is that as ESB as focus is on energy, um, that should also be a key part of the applications we want to see coming in here. Um, so sustainable energy is really what we're looking for in, in terms of like theme theme wise. Um, timeline and grant information. So uh, in terms of the timeline of the uh, applications, we will be um, open for applications until September 8th. Uh, that's a Wednesday at 5 p.m. Um, and we will hope to inform all applicants before the 31st of October 2021. And then we would like to see projects that are taking place between March 1st, 2022 and December 31st, 2023. So it's a really long lead in time in terms of when a project can be realized. And um, so we, we hope that that's appropriate for everyone who is thinking about this and that there's lots of scope here for development. Um, Applicants can request grants in the range of 20,000 euro to 40,000 euro or the sterling equivalent. And we expect to fund between four and six projects um, with the funding. Um, so that's kind of the overview of the fund. Um, as we've said already, if you have any questions as this goes along, you can feel free to use the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen and we will uh, get into some questions and answers at the end. But I'll, I'll hand back over to Eileen now and she's gonna talk us through some tips and tricks about grant writing. Perfect. Thanks very much, Hannah. Um, so in terms of your application, whenever you're really thinking about uh, the project that you want to do and um, how you're going to achieve it, really just kind of think about what are those kind of goals that you have for your project um, in terms of reflecting that sense um, from ESB as to what a brighter future looks like. Think about what that goal might look like for you in terms of is it engaging people um, from a local community? Is it creating an artwork that maybe is a bio um, kind of piece of art that will continue to grow and develop over time. Think about what those kind of goals are for your project and then kind of just work in those kind of steps backwards to actually figure out what all of kind of the different conditions and outcomes that have to be there within your project, like those kind of small building blocks to then actually be able to make that end goal happen. And that's what we kind of want to see in the application as well. So it's a fully online application process that you will be asked to complete. And um, it's got a number of questions that are in that application form. And the questions are available on our website just as a, um, a general kind of um, a PDF as a reference document, just so that you can work offline, gather up lots of information and then come back to the online portal and then pop it in there. In terms of the actual application itself, always try and give yourself enough time to do it. Now, it might seem like there's loads of time because the 8th of September is quite a distance away into the future. But with um, summertime and the glorious weather that we're having today and annual leave for people and bank holidays, the time can disappear quite quickly. So just try and give yourself enough time to get started. And it's always a good idea to have a quick look at those questions now, if you can, just to see what content you might need to kind of approach other people for to be able to gather it all together. You do need to just make sure that you're answering all the questions that are asked. Um, not all the questions are mandatory, but most of them are. The online system will indicate which ones are optional and which ones are mandatory. So it's just to kind of make sure as you're going through the application, always just have a wee check that the questions that you're answering are the ones that you need to definitely answer and have a good substantial um, answer for. With that said, be mindful of the work count and um, there are several questions on the application form where we're asking you to be quite kind of short and sweet with your answer i want a really kind of impactful punchy statement as to what your project is going to be how it's going to engage with people 
how you're going to evaluate the project and, and its success or otherwise. And really just keep a note on that work count. Um, there is a small um, kind of count on top of each question box. Um, and it does kind of, as you are typing into the field, it will rack up the number of words that you've typed in. So you can always just kind of bear that in mind if you're kind of approaching the end of a sentence and you need to shave off a few words, you can do that. Um, it's something just to bear in mind that whenever you go to submit your entry, you will not be able to submit your application form if you have went beyond a word count in any of the questions and the system will flag that to you. It will let you know that you have have an error in a box and it's probably to do possibly with the word count. Um, leading on from that, we're just asking that you try and use clear, concise language to really kind of convey to us the project, what impact it's going to have, how you're really hitting that goal of what does a better future look like, other themes and agendas around carbon neutrality and um, environmental sustainability, trying to engage with the community. So just try and have, you know, really clear, insightful um, comments in your um, application questions so that we can see immediately from the outset that this project is going to have a terrific impact on a local community. Um, in terms of the question about uh, forgetting about the money, it's one of those things where you can kind of, you know, get really kind of invested in the actual cash behind things, but really just kind of look at what the project is, what your aims are going to be and how you're going to be able to achieve that. And then do try and uh, kind of build your budget around that. And Hannah will touch more um, in depth on the budget, but always kind of make sure that you have appropriate figures in there and that you have considered as much as is possible about the cash and where it will go and where the money will have the best impact within your overall project. And then one of the big things to always think about is that people give to people. So within ESB, you know, there are a lot of um, stakeholders involved. Bevan Cody, who's the corporate reputation manager, you know, she's a, a key driver within ESB of this fund, as are many other of our, of our colleagues there. And we and whenever we have an assessment panel, we are looking at this from a very kind of personal um, kind of um, kind of perspective. And we just want to see that we've got some great projects happening they're going to really engage with people and um, from the impact then also on you as artists and arts organizations that are working to kind of create these projects if we know how this project will really impact you in a very positive manner and how it will then impact um on the community in general in a very positive way that that's kind of the real thing it's all about like you know people giving to people is a real kind of uh, key thing to have at the heart of any application that you're going to do in terms of figures and statistics, you may know at this point, you know, the amount of people that you're trying to uh, reach out to. Uh, if you maybe have a community group or an environmental group or a tidy town group that you want to work with, you may know the people who are involved and the levels of engagement that you might have. Pop that in where relevant or if you have any previous experience with projects, let us know in terms of that kind of um, figures, just so that we can get a, um, a greater sense whenever we're reviewing your application as to what um, those kind of figures and stats are and um, just to kind of you know give us as much information about your experiences as possible whenever you're going through the application you're going to have all of the questions on the actual online form do always have the criteria kind of to the right or left hand side of it just to make sure that you've really reviewed those criteria and checked that you've hit those points it's kind of like in any exam go back to read the actual exam question before you know diving into the answer and um, just to make sure that you're hitting the criteria that ESB have asked for and um, to make sure that whenever you are giving us in that full application that it is hitting all of those nice points within th those criteria that are very clearly laid out and are available on the website as well as on the online system. It's always a good idea to kind of have um, someone, whether it's within your um, organization or a friend or someone who's going to be working with you on the project, just get them to review the application. Um, it's always good to have a second set of eyes because everyone kind of knows that you know, the more involved you are with something, the less likely you might be to pick up any kind of mistakes or, or any kind of things like that. Um, and it's always good to kind of make sure that there's no jargon in there. You, know, you might know what your abbreviations are to people. Um, you know, if you have maybe an, an, in, an in-house style of communication or chatting with each other, but someone on the outside on the assessment panel may not be privy to that information. And it's just to make sure that whenever we're reviewing the applications and the assessment panel are making their decisions, they know exactly what it is that you're referring to. Um, always have a wee check for a spell check and kind of the grammar. The system will not do a spell check for you. So that's just something to bear in mind. Um, whenever you're typing through, it does do the word count check, but it doesn't do spell check. So it's always a good idea just to have someone to kind of check that. And particularly with your budget. Um, we do ask that your budget is um, completely accurate between both columns in terms of the funds that you're requesting and the percentage of that from the overall budget. So just try and make sure that you have someone there with a second calculator to make sure that all of that stuff is, is accurate, just so that we know exactly what is you're requesting, you've fully thought about the budget and everything is all there, nice, neat and tidy. 
And finally, the one kind of major piece of advice is never leave it to the last minute. It can be very easy to kind of think that you've got loads of time and you're diving into it with a couple hours to go. Do try and submit your application at least a day before the closing date. So the deadline is 5 p.m. on Wednesday, the 8th of September. So again, it does seem like a fair time away, but always try and get in ahead of time. Um, our system is well set up to receive lots of applications at the last minute, but just for your own peace of mind, try and get it in if you can the day before. And then you've even if you wanted to send us a quick email to just double check that we have it in the system and it's all okay, then your mind is at rest um, as opposed to having to do um, a bit of a, a bit of a mad dash toward the end. But that would be our kind of our main information for trying to get um, a good application into the ESB fund and generally in terms of, of grant writing. So we're just going to pop on now. Hannah's got a bit more information in terms of audience and different things. So she's just going to go through that with you now. Thanks, Eileen. And um, so within the application form itself, we we do ask that you talk a little bit about your the audience and how you're going to engage your audience um, in your project. And so with what we mean by that is that the people who will engage with your project, how you are going to engage with them, how you're going to speak to them, how you're going to reach them, all of these things. Um, obviously, we've mentioned before that we're looking for projects that engage with the general public. And so in, we're going to encourage you to think about the community that you would like to to engage with uh, and how this project might manifest and, and think about questions like why is this important and um, who might the project participants be or the project audience be and uh, who are the intended audience and why and why does it matter to this project why does why is it important that you're, you're reaching this specific group of people um, how will you engage the audience and the participants and and what is the greater impact of this how is there going to be a legacy piece coming from this is it going to be a one-off occasion that will kind of impact people on a personal level or is this going to be more of a tangible uh thing that that lasts for a longer time longer period of time um just encourage we encourage you to, to think critically about those kinds of questions um we ask that you give context context to your to your audience and um, rather than just identifying that you know you want to hit a certain age group of people or a certain you know demographic of people please explain the significance of why you want to work with a, a set amount of people um, and why it matters to this project what the impact will be overall and um, we also encourage you to be succinct and use specific language it can be easy to when you're speaking you know about larger concepts like this to sort of speak in broad strokes and and be kind of um uh you know uh, loose in your language but uh, we encourage you to be succinct and specific in in everything that you say and give us examples of things um relate back to the objectives of the project this is a really important thing that we see all the time is that people will have um, wonderful big ideas but uh, we just want to see that it's tied back to the overall objectives and goals of the project so really do nail into what you actually want to achieve with the project and by the end of end results what what you want to have achieved and how you're going to get there and um, so Eileen's going to speak a little bit about um, how we would like to see questions around evaluation being addressed so I'll hand that back to you there Eileen Perfect. Yeah. Thanks, Anna. Um, so in terms of the evaluation, so um, one of the questions in the application form will ask you um, how you're going to evaluate the project. And that might seem quite um, a daunting question for those of you that maybe um, aren't as um, used to application um, funding rounds and things like that. Maybe if you're more community focused, you might not have came across that before. The main thing with an evaluation and what we're asking you to think about Similarly to what Hannah has just said, is about thinking about what your project is aiming to achieve in terms of those objectives. So what are those objectives that you very clearly identified elsewhere in the application form and what you have in your head and what you're really trying to kind of work towards? It might be trying to get um, really nice positive engagement with the general public. You could be trying to increase your audience reach for a certain project. And um, you want to maybe work with a specific community. And again, just kind of refer back to kind of why it's that specific community as opposed to maybe other groups of people. And um, you could be trying to develop your own artistic practice in that particular area, if that's a new, maybe new avenue for you to go down, or you might have a range of other objectives. That's really just to kind of have a think about what is it that your project is trying to achieve, which hopefully you have mapped out elsewhere, and then think about how you're going to let us know 
that you've achieved those objectives. That's essentially what we're kind of asking to do. So if, if you want to increase your audience reach, that's brilliant. Let us know how you're going to figure that out, whether it's going to be uh, through audience feedback, uh, ticket sales with appropriate audience numbers, just keeping an eye on who's been able to, to be there, whether it's an audience to view an artwork or participants who are engaging in an artwork. And it's really about thinking about those different kind of methods of how you can capture that information and think about those um, steps that you need to put in place to make sure that you have that information so that if you're a successfully funded project through the ESB, Brighter Future Arts Fund, and we then ask you to report back as you're going through your project and let us know how you're getting on with your project, that you're able to provide us with that data and that information as opposed to having to think about it after the fact. So again, it brings back to that uh, kind of question around um, kind of change theory and the fact that you, if you know what you want to achieve, then what are the building blocks you need to put in place now so that you're able to easily report back on it at the end? And it doesn't have to be anything kind of major in terms of method. It could just be um, general data capture uh, from maybe social media um, interaction engagement. Um, it could be audience feedback. If you have people who are there and they want to fill in a small survey or they just send you um, some good information back on social media or even just as they're walking out of the area or venue or project that they've been participating in or engaging with that they just let you know that really good kind of as we said anecdotal evidence it can be hard to capture but if you just if you have lots of positive information and reinforcement from people it's always good to try and take a quick note of it down just so that you can say you know lots of people came really positive engagement and um, even if they maybe come back to you in a couple of weeks or months time to say you know that project really resonated with me I'd love for it to happen again is it going to maybe tour things like that so just really think about kind of why you have selected those particular methods for being able to figure out whether your project has been a success or not. And it's, it's not a kind of thing that if you have mapped out an evaluation on your project it doesn't turn out the way that you want it to, that's all part of the organic kind of change and development of projects. So if you've mapped out how you're going to capture this information, you then see how the project maybe has changed organically. And then that will be a nice learning for the future. And that's kind of where with this evaluation kind of method, we're encouraging you to really think critically and strategically and with an eye to the future so that if you're developing this kind of project and this evaluation process, whether you're um, successfully funded or not, you're always thinking about that in the future and then how you're going to be able to take these learnings from this particular project and move it forward then into something else that might manifest in a different way or in a different area venue or in a completely different kind of method um, in the future so that's it, it might seem like quite a, a daunting question in terms of evaluation but it's, it's basically just trying to let us know how you've been successful in your project with those objectives that you've clearly outlined and that's that's basically what we are um, asking with the evaluation. So we're just going to move on now briefly to the budget. Hannah's got a bit more information in terms of uh, the budget and what we're going to be asking for. Thanks, Eileen. Um, so with any kind of grant writing or application uh, process, obviously the budget is a key part and it can be kind of overwhelming or, or daunting to address. But um, we really want you to use this as a tool that, to help your project and to help your application. So um, within our application, we have included two separate budget tables. The first budget table is where we would like to see your projected use of your grant funds. So this is speaking specifically about the money you're requesting from the ESB Brighter Future Arts Fund, how you will be spending that money or allocating that money within your budget. Um, that's, that's what we would like to see in this table. The second budget is an overall project budget, which it would, might include other uh, funds or other you know sources of income that you might have and um, so with that said you you are eligible to apply for 100% of the funding um, but you also can have previous funding sources and and use you know other funds to to combine with the ESB Brighter Future Arts Fund so um, with the overall project budget this is where we would like to see that if you if you do have other sources of funding that you're you're allocating it appropriately and then we can see where you are you know allocating your funds that you're specifically requesting from the ESB Brighter Future Arts Fund. This is really to help us in the assessment path uh, process and, and the assessment panel and um, it just to see the, the how realistic you're being with your budget how realistic the project is and also just to make sure that everything is in order and um, with regards to allocation of funds um, we would expect to see that projects allocate at least 40 percent of their overall budget to artist fees so that's 40 percent of the overall budget and um, this is because we would like to see artists being paid appropriately for their work this is a key part of our objectives at business to arts we want to see um, equitable pay for artists 
so this is appropriate in our in our minds um, again artists might include you know the, the the professional artist you're working with it might include artist, artist facilitators it might include um, sound technicians um, videographers photographers we would consider all of these people to be creative artistic professionals um, so that's just a note there and, and it does generate a lot of questions so if you do have any specific questions about your budget please send them to us um, I'll drop the email address in our in our chat feature there but it's brighter future arts fund at business to arts.ie if you have specific questions about your budget um, oh, oh, sorry I might just give you <laughs> get you to go back thanks <laughs> uh, I, I didn't know my, my notes off by heart Eileen so I would have been stuck Sorry, I was trying <laughs> to type in the email address for people I'll do that now all good um, so oh yeah another another thing is is that as we're working on an all island fund obviously some of you may be uh, working in euros and so some may be working in sterling so please just specify which currency you're working in just so our, for our ease of knowledge and, and understanding um, it's an easy thing to miss but if you just put the currency indicator or even if you want to say like in brackets euro or sterling um, that that works for us as well just so that we have clarity around that. Um, ensure that all the columns add up, just get your calculator out, make sure you tot up all the figures and make sure it all adds up because it's just one of those things that the assessment panel will be confused on the other end of things if they don't, if, they, if everything, doesn't, everything doesn't tot up to 100%. So just make sure that you double check all your sums and figures before you submit. Um, also ensure that you've appropriately allocated budget um, to all line items. So um, that's materials, transport costs, um, also insurance. That's something that we see a lot of people miss out on. But you know, if you are working in, in any kind of like public facing um, uh, realm, you will need public liability insurance. And we would like to see this outlined and how you're, you're going to factor that into your overall budget. Um, the budget should reflect the intentions of the project so for example if there is an installed artwork or maybe may permanent or temporary again that you have indicated there would be um, installation fees or insurance fees or anything like that uh, similarly if you're working with any third-party advisors that you have appropriate fees uh, estimates or anything like that just so that we know that you're thinking realistically about the uh, viability of the project and, and how well you can you can pull it off with the budget required um in the budget text or the column boxes, excuse me, in the budget tables, uh, you can enter text into, into each uh, table. So if you have any in-kind expenses, you can add a row and say, you know, we will have, you know, 500 euro worth of, uh, I mean, branding, for example, that is going to be provided in kind by our partner organization. So that, that's just a helpful tool for you to use um, as you are using the uh, budget tables. Um, and overall, we encourage you to think realistically about your budget and this is here to help you. We definitely don't want to see um, artists, you know, going broke as a result of trying to uh, achieve a project and, and or bring a project to realization. So, so please do just use the budget to your advantage and, and be as realistic as possible in, in thinking about what you can achieve with the funds allocated. Um, so I think that's kind of all our notes there on, on uh, the budget, the evaluation, audience and grant writing. So I think we can move on to our question and answers section. Um, and I'm just going to pull up our Q&A box. So someone says, um, if you are a venue and have staff or personnel who are technicians and creative, creative professionals in the project creation, would this be part of the artist fees or considered a core cost? That is a very good question. Uh, Eileen, I wonder, would you have any thoughts about this? It's, it's quite a specific question. Yeah. Perfect. Um, so in terms of uh, this project, um, what we're really trying to see is an artist working in partnership with an organization. So if you are the venue and you have staff and personnel who are going to be um, technicians and really kind of helping a project manifest, that's perfectly fine. And that could be included as part of the artist's fees. But we will still, still need to see a specific artist um, that you're going to be working with to actually enable that project come to life so certainly if you have um you know um a stage crew or um you know film or um kind of audio visual um crew who are on hand to kind of help something come to life whether it be online or maybe been um kind of broadcast on outside wall of your venue that's perfectly fine and can be part of the artist fee but we do need to see a specific artist that you're working with in tandem to actually enable our project come to life because one of the main criteria for this fund is that you've got artists working in partnership with other organizations so um certainly if you're the venue coming in just um make sure that you have um that artist identified so we can see that at least some of the artist fees would definitely be going to 
and artist and then the other um, kind of fees that you have kind of attributed will go toward those creative professions. Thanks Eileen. Um, so we have another question here. Um, if we're working with young people or a school, do we need to include a specific child protection policy? Um, we don't request that in advance, but one thing we have stipulated in the application uh, sort of terms and conditions is that if you're working with vulnerable groups or, or communities that you have obtained uh, appropriate uh, access NI or Garda vetting. Um, and that's something that we have we've built into uh, the agreement process as well. Once the grants grant is being distributed, we will ask um, all applicants to or all uh, grant uh, recipients to enter into agreement with us and um, it and part of that is that you have obtained correct uh, guard of vetting or access and I um, uh, uh, support so um, I hope that answers that question um, I think it might it's just, just do you want to add to that Eileen? Yeah I could probably just add to that um, if you're going to be working with um, a school or an organization that has young people or vulnerable adults as part of their um, participants they probably have a specific child protection policy that you can follow and um, if you're going to be um, an individual artist working with an organization and then bringing in um, additional young people it's always good to have a quick check and um, we have a Child protection policy available on our own um, website that we use because we have worked with young people in the past so you can use that as kind of a reference tool um, so while, like Hannah said, you don't need to include a specific child protection policy in your application, it's something to be fully kind of mindful of that if you're going to be working with young people or a school, they might have their own policy that you need to adhere to and permission slips need to be all completed and filled out by all relevant guardians um, and people who are engaged with that project. Or if you need some help with that, um, the HSE also have a range of child protection um, policies available on their website, uh, as well as other school education boards. So there are lots of resources there. And um, that's something, as Hannah said, when we get through the selection process and we've identified which projects we're going to work with, we can assist you at that stage to maybe figure out um, permission slips and different things like that. But you just need to be fully guarded vetted. Or if you're in Northern Ireland, um, you've got access and I um, permissions just to make sure that you are OK to work in those institutions. Thanks, Eileen. Um, someone is asking for advice on insurance. Um, so what kind of insurance is needed for art installations in public spaces and or which agency should or could be contacted on this? Eileen, would you take a pass at that? Um, yeah, so essentially any kind of artwork or art project that's going to happen in a public space, um, the artist needs to be fully covered by public liability insurance. And there's usually um, kind of very strict guidelines. It's up to kind of 6.5 million euros in terms of the indemnity cover. That's just a standard cover. It sounds astronomical, but it's just in terms of um, having that cover that if you have an artwork installed and someone possibly um, rides into it on a bicycle or trips over it or uh, something falls off it and, and, and hurts somebody, or if you just have a project that's happening and you're gathering people together in one space, and then again, someone maybe falls over uh, a handbag or trips over some uh, paint cans or whatever it might be, you have to have that insurance. Um, there's lots of um, insurance brokers available throughout Ireland that provide public liability insurance. So you can just, um, whenever you're thinking about that for your budget, if you want to just get like a quote from someone and again you, you don't necessarily have to have the insurance in place for the application but whenever we get to the agreement stage for those selected projects you will have to have insurance um in place at that point and um, but again you can get lots of quotes online it's basically just public liability insurance that you have to look for um and the artist specifically you'd have to have it as yourself as an individual artist uh, most organizations um should have that in place anyway but yourself as that third party artist may want to get it yourself and um, individually just to make sure that everyone's appropriately covered and i've actually just added a link it's there um visual artists ie have a good uh, page about insurance for artists and how to approach that so that might be a helpful resource or tool but if you have any specific questions you can send them to us as well through the email address brighter future arts fund at business to arts .ie. Um, I haven't seen any other questions come in through our questions and answer box here. Um, so I might just hold off. Does I think I noticed a few further? people maybe had raised their hand. So ah. I don't know maybe if you want to maybe pop a question into the box or if you want to, um, if you want ah. us to give you a shout. Someone is, someone is uh, offering a, uh, someone is offering a recommendation about it in insurance. So uh, Deirdre, thank you very much. Not sure if we're allowed to recommend here, but I find event insure really great. That's very great. Thank you so much for uh, providing that. Uh, raising hands. I, I'm not sure if I could see that uh, feature here. Uh, yeah, so I think um, 
Muriel, if she's still here, had her hand raised, and I think Bance had her hand had his hand raised as well. Oh, her hand. Might be more of a check with their hand than I would be. I think. Oh, let's see. That was by accident. <laughs> Thanks, Muriel. Oh, sorry, Muriel. <laughs> Called you out there. <laughs> All good. All good. Uh, well, I think that. Um, We'll, we'll hold um, on for another few minutes. Yeah. I think that it's 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 good for us to keep, you know, having uh, these questions and answers. And and uh, it's one of those things that if you if you do think of something, maybe you go away today and uh, then something comes to you in the middle of the night, just feel free to drop us an email um, and we'd be happy to assist. Uh, so someone just came in here, just double checking if VAT is inclusive in the project budget. Thanks. Uh, Eileen, you'd be probably more well versed in this than I am. <laughs> yeah, um, whenever you're thinking about your project budget, always include VAT. So um, the amount of funding that is um, available from the ESB, Brighter Future Arts Fund, is between 20 and 40,000 euros. So if you're putting in um, a fund request for 30,000 euros, it's only going to be 30,000 euros that you're going to receive from the fund. It's not going to be that plus VAT. So whenever you're thinking about uh, any quotations that you have for equipment costs, uh, insurance costs, any of the transport needs and um, materials, whatever that might be, always make sure that you're looking at that kind of full figure, including VAT. Otherwise, you might end up um, putting through your project budget and realizing then that you haven't accounted for VAT. And that's a good kind of you know 23 percent um, additional money. Um, so whenever you're thinking about the budget, always include VAT um, because you're better to include the VAT on everything. And then you kind of, you know, scale up slightly rather than um, scaling down. So that's the kind of said to be very realistic with that budget in terms of of your questions um, and VAT does have to be paid. So just bear that in mind. Absolutely. It's a good question. Thank you. Um, Una, uh, wondering if there are any more webinars planned for this project. Uh, these two have been uh, are covering a lot of ground. Uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, these are the only webinars we've planned for this uh, arts fund. Um, we did give a pretty good overview of the sort of general how to apply uh, and the mission behind the Brighter Future Arts Fund in our uh, Tuesday webinar, which you can watch back on YouTube. Um, and I've sent it in the link in our in our chat feature. And um, but this is this is all we have planned for after today. But you're welcome to watch them back until you know until after you submit your application if you want if you want to hear us uh, talking about uh, the arts fund and um, we'll have them up forever on our youtube um so uh, yeah i think that's that's been great uh, thank you very much for for all your questions um i think we all should just uh, work towards our uh oh thank you very much for all your your thanks there um we we should all just work towards the deadline of uh, wednesday september 8th 5 p.m that is the deadline for applications for the Brighter Future Arts Fund open call. Um, and we welcome any questions you have in the meantime. Again, the, the email address is there, Brighter Future Arts Fund at business. We have a raised hand there. Oh, we do. Where do you yeah. see the raised James hand? James raised his hand. It. Oh, James. Where did it go now? If you, if you want oh, to chat Joanne into the... Joanne is also raised. If anyone would like to say anything in the chat or... Um, the so, Q&A box. I'm not sure how to get the raised hand situation. Uh, you just click on participants uh, oh, and then go from there. Yeah. So, uh, Joanna oh, Regan. It's also, yeah. Are you okay to maybe bring Joanna in? Yeah. So, I think I can only chat with Joanne. I can't actually bring her in on the, oh, on the actual... Joanne left. Maybe people are just waving at us. <laughs> yeah, we're taking us that. Um, yeah. <laughs> sorry if we're not um, maybe as au fait with the old um, Zoom raised hands. But um, yeah. if we do have any questions that you do have um, that we maybe didn't touch upon or you didn't get a chance to just to type it into the chat, um, do just drop us an email at Brighter Future Arts Fund at businesstowards.ie and Hannah or myself can give you a quick call back yeah. um, to discuss. Um, similarly, if there's a question that you have that might be quite a um, more substantial question that maybe needs a bit more conversation and kind of teasing through and um, those things are probably better to um, discuss on the phone and um, rather than in a small chat box and um, particularly questions around budget and evaluation those are things that you might need to kind of um, tease out with us on the phone so do give us um, do give us a call around that and similarly 
we will have the webinar fully available on our website now and um, from later on this afternoon we do also have that FAQ document which has been um, developed through other arts funds that we have worked on in addition to um, very specific ESB Brighter Future Arts Funds questions that's a live document so as we receive questions in we'll be updating that document so if you do have any other kind of questions that strike you in the next kind of coming days and weeks, do pop it in and then we'll be able to put it up for everyone to kind of see thereafter so that everyone's got um, as much knowledge as they can to kind of provide us with um, a very clear and substantial application coming in. Um, one thing to note as well on the application form, uh, it, again, it's all fully online and um, it does allow for photographs and video to be uploaded as well in support of your application, but no further kind of PDF um, or Word documents. So the questions are the only way that you have to actually really put your best foot forward to get your information across to us um, in the actual uh, application form. And then you can upload some videos and images um, as attachments thereafter. Um, but as Hannah said, we will just be kind of working towards that deadline um, of the 8th of September. Um, do try and get it in if we can a few days before. We'll all be back to school at that point. Um, hopefully, fingers crossed and everything will be open and a bit more active so we look towards September as a as a point in time when hopefully we'll be able to be a bit more outdoors and uh, engaging with people in person once more um, but I think that's everything for today and um, again do just drop us any kind of questions that you might have on Brighter Future Arts Fund at businesstowards.ie and we'll be able to come back to you uh, pretty shortly but I think that's everyone for now yeah so um, thank, thank you all for joining much. Really lovely to have you all and thank you for your questions and uh, hope you enjoy the rest of the beautiful day. Yes, enjoy the rest of the weather and uh, have a lovely weekend, everyone. Thanks very much. Bye. Bye now.